just to, to make the way that, uh, that Larry Martin did pass away last night so we can keep him in our prayers and his family as we uh, begin our prayers of resurrection. That would be wonderful if we could do that. Let us begin our prayer. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to all hearts who are open, all desires know, and from you no secrets are here. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory Here's to God. God our Christ. Christ. And peace to his kingdom on earth. Glory to God and the King. Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your word. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God. Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the temple police had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet, here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, together we'll read Psalm 150 and we'll read it responsibly by half verse. Alleluia! Praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the firmament of God. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent praise. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the blood of your heart. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and white. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud things. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A reading from the book of Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. <clears throat> to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. And made us to be a kingdom, priest serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the cloud. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and I put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, 
and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach your hand, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you might come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Probably in the hearing of this, in our hearing of this in the past, Thomas kind of gets a really bad rap. He is the one that is kind of singled out. And yet, interestingly enough, when previous to the passage that we've had today, when the disciples themselves were presented by the women that Jesus had risen, they didn't believe them. And it's only as we hear in this gospel, when the disciples, when Jesus shows them his hand and his side, then they rejoice. So really, they're in the same boat as, as Thomas. It's just Thomas happens to be the one who wasn't there the one before. That just goes to show you, if you miss a meeting, you're going to be, you know, yeah. probably giving something or you're going to want to push you on the But he was the same as the other ones. It's not until the hands and the side thing that, that, you know, that's what he needs. He needs something. And that is the challenge of this gospel this morning, is the difference between the faithful aspects of our lives and the practical. What makes sense? Isn't it something, though, that, that Jesus, when he comes to the, the women, he shares that with them, and then these women go back to the disciples. They knew each other. They knew each other for a long time. And it wasn't like one person, like, Person's like, you know, all right, that's so and so, so we don't have to listen to what they said. But they all say the same thing and they don't believe them. They don't trust them. The people with whom they live, the people that they shared friendship with and camaraderie, and the same thing happens between the disciples and Thomas. Thomas doesn't believe his friends. And they weren't just friends, which is good enough, they were people of common faith, and you knew them. They weren't necessarily open to flights of fancy or kind of weird or odd things. But he doesn't believe them. Not what the others told them. And he, they, Thomas and then of course the disciple who really began to back forward back to the women, they exclude what they tell them. They don't respect that. Now granted, all right, in the, in the, in the interest of, of really fairness, it's kind of ridiculous to say, hey, someone who is dead is now alive. In a practical sense, it is. In a faith sense, it is not. Because Jesus had numerous times told his disciples that the Son of Man must suffer and die at the hands of sinners and raised on the third day. They heard this all before, but it wasn't in faith that they received it. It wasn't in those terms. And so we have this, this issue here. Now, why would John, the gospel writer, why would he write this and put this in the passage? Now, let's just say before people get this the wrong way. It happened, okay? That's not the point. Why is John making this a point to the community to whom he's writing, to this church? And if you think about it, it's probably because in John's community, as he's writing this gospel, there are people out there who actually experienced the risen Jesus. It's that first generation. There were some of them, that, yeah, I remember that. And there are probably a lot of others who were present for that, but then became members 
And you can kind of see, I was there when Jesus came. Where were you? You weren't a member. And it's sometimes how we act towards each other. It's how the disciples acted towards the women. It's how Thomas acted towards his, his, his other disciples. Somebody had a claim to be something that something that the others were not. And so they, you know, what do you do? You know, those who saw, and that's why this passage becomes so important because we always hear that seeing is believing. It's not. It's not in faith. Believing is believing. And so what we have in this gospel is the fact that really what Jesus says to Thomas, he says to Thomas, do not doubt but believe. That's what we have here. But in actually the, the, the gospel itself, the, the original gospel, it says, don't be unbelieving, but believe. So the gospel, the whole message is, is an issue of belief and an issue of faith. And faith is the big key that really turns and makes a difference in the way we live. And there's a phrase that says, it's not so much what we believe, but the difference it makes in our lives. So if we are people of faith and we have belief, and we do believe in things, it's going to make our lives different somehow. And that's going to be different for every person. So that's a good gauge as to whether we're Unbelieving or believing. It's unbelief that Thomas suffers from. And who's to blame? Again, it's, it's not an issue of boy, does he turn out to be a real, you know, person that we can sit back and kind of make fun of or say, well, that person's just talking. No, it's very understandable. It's an incredible story. And it's an incredible truth. But it's also something that makes a very big difference in our lives. There is a, uh, an already account, it's very interesting. <clears throat> there is a Jewish New Testament scripture scholar. Mm -hmm. That's great. But this is a Jewish person of the Jewish faith who studies the New Testament and is a scripture scholar. And this New Testament scripture scholar, this Jewish person, writes that he doesn't doubt that there was a resurrection. Why would these people who were cowering in a room and who had been subjected to so much fear and, and they were just intimidated and, and just a mess go in such a short period of time from a hiding to preaching in the temple, to preaching in the synagogues, to being out in, among people? What, what event, what thing could have happened to them that made a difference. And so this, this Jewish scripture scholar, it's a beautiful thing that he says, there must have been a resurrection because there is such a big difference. And that's the point. The big difference is the difference of faith. And the fact that this, this faith unlocks doors that we have control over. God's grace is out there. And God's love is out there. And what does Jesus say about the fact you don't need to see to believe you have to have faith. Blessed are those who have not seen. So that aspect of that part of John's community that did not have that opportunity to be and actually see the resurrected Jesus and everybody else for 2,000 years after that were blessed. Blessed with the gift of faith and to believe and open up those doors that we have that control over a wider. So if this is, again, here we are, we're on the second <coughs> Sunday of Easter, and we're going to go through you know, another four or so weeks of this, and that's kind of the trend, and that's the way the church celebrates in May, and here we go, and we get on with whatever. We miss the whole point of Easter and the resurrection. Because it is an issue, as we have said time and time again, of new life. And what does it say at the end of the gospel? That through believing, you may have life. What, were they dead before? Not physically, certainly. But that you may have life. And the life and the resurrection that, that Jesus speaks of 
is, is through faith we open the doors greater to God's grace and his love and the greater gifts that come with that, particularly peace in a divine sense and love. So each year as we celebrate this, it's an invitation to open those doors wider. And faith is that key that does that. And we are kind of really the people in control because God will give us all and everything we want and we need. But sometimes we shrink that because we get stuck in the practical. Are you angry? Do you have hatred? Do you have fear? Are there things that are doubtful or that are not believable in your life? Is there anxiety? Is there negativity? And if any of us answers yes to any of them, that is exactly what Easter comes to give us the gift to not just deal with and cope with, it's not just coping skills, but to really come to the other side. To come to life. All of us do, of course. I think there, you know, we, we may pick one or two or one up here or there, but among all of us, all that stuff is part of our lives. It's part of life. And so the element of faith, as opposed to just going along and doing things the way we think they should be or that make sense to us, is being stuck in that kind of we need to see to believe. No, no, we need to believe the belief. And the gift of belief itself and be able to have faith. Is a gift of God. It's all given to us. But at a certain point, we have to accept it. So if we are people of the resurrection, and we are people of new life, there has to be in our lives an expectation that today and last Sunday, aside from all the beautiful Easter stuff, the nice flowers and all that other stuff, there's got to be something different than what came before. What did we spend all of Lent doing? Is it misery for misery's sake? Well, hopefully Lent wasn't miserable. But if it was a time of self-realization, a time of opening ourselves up to the truth about ourselves and God, good. Because then that makes that room for the faith to fill us. And so then Easter becomes, and the weeks that we will celebrate beyond here, the time, and I'm going to go back to it, and if you get sick of it, well, that's hopefully good because any heard it before, and I've said it a number of times. Remember, as we went into Lent, we said, remember the transfiguration. We carry that image all the way through Lent because right now it's about Jesus' true self being revealed in the transfiguration. But for us, in our transfiguration, it's allowing the true who and what we are to come out. And what it's like, I remember like when, when I was a kid, you go out and you play. You get dirt. And always when you come back in the house, at least for me, you got a scrub brush and baraxo. The <laughs> stuff was like sandpaper. <laughs> but after a while of scrubbing and you know, those are big things, check your fingernails and all that other stuff, you know. You scrub and you clean, and what's underneath is that beautiful child, that wonderful young person who had been like, kind of hate to get cleaned up well. Well, the transfiguration that this Jesus draws us to and what this new life is, is who we really are. Who are you really? And in faith, we understand it's not all that stuff that we get mired in and sometimes get caked in. But it is a life of love, a life of mutual respect, a life of being empowered by God to have things, and here it goes, here's the faith element, to have things happen and live a life that is well beyond what we could ever conceive or imagine. How am I going to get along with this person? Well, you're not, but through faith, God will help you to not only live with this person, but then you can mend these relationships. You can heal. You can forgive. You can be lifted up, and you can lift up others. And if we're not living in that sense, then we're still stuck in the practice. And this is just the second Sunday of Easter. Pretty flowers, yay. And hopefully he won't go too much longer. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not faith. That's not why we're here on a Sunday morning. And it doesn't have to be part of the Red Sea. 
But if Jesus can walk out of the tomb, and the disciples can walk out of that locked room and grow in an appreciation of their sisters who brought them the information, and then Thomas of the brothers that shared that with him and trust each other, we can live a different life. And not any better than anybody else because it's open to everybody. And if it's not, then again, we're stuck in the practical and not in the big. New life. What a great gift. None of that old stuff of growling, become horrible about yourself, and self debasement, bullying, you know, such a horrible thing. There's a lot of serious things that go wrong in the world and that are wrong with the world. But you know what? The power of God is far greater than anything that we can cook up. And the times we've seen in our history as Christians in the time of faith, where people are faithful, big differences are made. But they start in each one of our hearts and how we deal with our sisters and with our brothers. And knowing the fact that our limitations are our limitations, but they're not God's. Faith and practical. Are you practical? Give yourself a big helping school of misery because we will fall short and we will be disappointed in ourselves. And I thought, wonderful we go. But by the grace of God, we will be more enlightened by the great gift God has given each one of us by making us who we are. And to let that shine, that transfiguration, that brilliant exposition of the true nature of who and what we are. True say, May God be blessed. Amen. Let you stand if you wish and let us profess our truth. We believe you. Renew our hearts with the Holy Spirit, 
to serve your children with proper food, housing, and jobs. Bot of peace, hear our prayer. Have mercy on the sick and heal them. Fill the hearts of the dying with a strong faith in their resurrection. God of peace, hear our prayer. We also invite to your prayers, we could remember Larry and his family. Let's also remember in our prayers, Debbie. God peace. Yeah. Lord, keep us in your love. Preserve our community and do not let us become separated from one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I appeal to you, sisters and brothers, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. All things come of the Lord. And of the, Lord. the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, God, is our might, heaven and earth are holy, 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 Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is God. Christ is God. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father and his sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also 
that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. And as we uh, communion is distributed throughout the church, let's pray together with our sisters and brothers who are not physically receiving communion as the one body of Christ by praying our prayer of St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Let us pray our post communion prayer. Eternal God, May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. As far as announcements, um, I just remind you that uh, there is a sign-up sheet for coffee hour. First, we invite you all to coffee hour after service, but also there's a sign-up sheet should you be able to or uh, desire to um, help provide that sometime during the month of May.
I have a few fellowship updates. Um, following the service, um, we'll be meeting in the back room, room D. If anybody would like to join the fellowship team, you're more than welcome. We do a lot of fun things, and your input is always welcome. Um, so just grab a copy and come in the back with the back page. Um, we have a Cinco de Mayo party scheduled for Saturday, May 21st, from 3 to 5. Um, to be held in the Naniati way. Um, we'll have tapas, appetizer, and sangria, and other beverages. Um, there's a sign up sheet in the parish hall if you sign up or let um, Connie Archer or Donna Bennett know. Um, Mrs. Jerry should be serving pots in the back. Um, the luncheon for May will be May 2nd at 12 30 at the Trivet Diner on Tilma Street. Um, that's near Route 39, not the one in May. So it's the Trivet on May 2nd. Um, the picnic, we have that scheduled for October 2nd. Um, so save the date on your calendars. So don't make any big trips or anything that you're on for the picnic. Because it should be fun. Okay, um, if anybody has any questions about that, please let me know. So, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're still collecting clothing and household goods for the Afghans. And also now, of course, you've probably heard that uh, we're going to be welcoming at least 100,000 Ukrainian refugees in this country. So we've opened our uh, goods to them and they will become the expected. Probably a number. We've already had two people come from Ukraine. And, and so if you have anything, uh, we are still accepting some things that we would need to specifically or particularly house members. With regard to the humanitarian aid in Ukraine, uh, John Bates and I this past week delivered uh, quite a bundle of uh, humanitarian goods, as well as a check for four to six hundred and fifty dollars. So we're still looking to collect the, those kind of things. The list that we are looking for the kind of things we need for is on the on the table outside next to the uh, in the church hall. Um, we delivered that over to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Allentown. And just a clarification: the dollars we collect. Uh, are not going to pay for the pilots. The government of Ukraine is going to pilots and air, air transport, etc. The money we do collect is going to be used for hospitals uh, to procure the things that we can't get. Finally, uh, we are going to have a presentation on May 4th at 6 p.m. in the church on Afghanistan. One of the fellows who came uh, early in our um, efforts to assist the uh, Afghans. Uh, we'll be here to make a presentation. He worked for the U.S. government and NGOs for over 20 years in Afghanistan. He arrived uh, sometime in, before the uh, fall of the government uh, last August. So uh, uh, if you want to attend, please sign up. So we have a limited attendance. We also need to know how many people will be there. There will be refreshments with an Afghan flavor to the following presentation and Q&A. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My first announcement is my usual announcement. I will have the giant boys gift cards on sale in the parish hall after the service today. Uh, my second announcement is for those at home, if you would like to help St. Anne's keep our lights on, you can go to our website, stanneansepiscopal.net, click on the contribution. Uh, tab and it'll walk you right through how to use your credit card to uh, help us out. Just a thought. Thank you for all coming. Thank you. I do believe the recessional hymn number is 645. Is that correct? No. <laughs> I'm really messing up. It's number 210 in the blue hymn Close. <laughs> That's hymn number 210. <laughs> Thank you. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thank you.